So thank you all for passing the mic uh, on to uh, anyone who will ask questions. I'll start. Uh, Gab um, Gabrieli, uh, I would like to ask about the food structure uh, and about the practical implications. So for example, if you cook pasta and cool it down, uh, is there more resistant starch that will you know, prevent the glu postprandial glucose um, increase? Um, is there any benefit of uh, you know, baking or uh, any, any, any food preparations? Well, uh, food preparation uh, has some impact on the glycemic end, but it's not huge. It is much more important the, the food technology which you imply, employ that m can make a difference. For instance, if you, uh, even if you are uh, utilizing a dietary fiber, and if, if you are going to disrupt the structure that you get in natural foods, in fruit or in beans, where there are fibers around the, the carbohydrates, you are instead introducing fiber in a food. Even if you are using the viscose fiber, we, we did this experiment with glucomannan. We repeated the experiment in a, uh, in a condition where other foods were present in a meal. And the impact was much lower because viscosity is going to be, uh, the, 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 is going to be diluted by the fact that there, there are other foods. So the food structure is uh, the most important thing. If you are utilizing technology which are not going to disrupt the food structure, that would improve uh, the, the, the impact. What you do at home, if you are cooking the pasta for 20 minutes, certainly this is going to increase the glycemic response. But in Italy, we would never cook pasta for 20 <laughs> minutes. So that's not the way to do. In any case, I mean, that's one possibility. But it's much more important food technology than what you do at home. And nowadays smoothies are popular. Uh, do you, you know, how much do you disrupt the, uh, the structure of the foods when you're preparing smoothies, even if, the f if you use whole fruits? You completely disrupt it, right? That's completely disrupting. It's not the same as fruit juice, mm -hmm. but certainly it's not the same as fruit. There are good data showing that if you are smoothing mm. the fruit, the, the blood glucose responds mm. with certain increase. And same with vegetables. And also, the, the, I mean, if you are uh, utilizing uh, uh, beans, if you are processing beans at home and you are smashing them, that's not so much mm. for the, uh, the impact it has on the, the structure of the uh, granules. But if you utilize food technology which is making a kind of, of a flour from beans, then all the, the, the properties of bean of having such a low glycemic response will be uh, in large part destroyed by the fact that you have disrupted the food, the food structure. So we, we should be much more interested, much more concentrated on, on this aspect of not distressing the food too much with the food technology that unfortunately the food industry is utilizing to a large extent today. Can I just make a, is that on? Yeah. Can I just make a, a comment about that? The, um, the types of, of fiber that you put into food can have a big impact on, on short chain fatty acid production. And particularly important are the resistant starches. So if you, um, if you feed people resistant starch, that shifts the, micro, the, the short chain fatty acid profile towards butyrate and to a certain extent to propionate, but very much butyrate. And that has, there's been a, a number of studies indicating that has a lot of beneficial effects. So the type, you know, the type is important and resistant starch may be a good um, means of, 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 of exerting health effects. The type of inulin uh, as well, it, it also makes a difference in relation yeah. to the impact on. So we more and more have now to investigate this relationship between type of fiber and the, the microbiota, because also the, the microbiota, which is present in, in the body to start with, will influence the ability to, to ferment the dietary fiber. There are some people who are good fermented, some people are bad fermented. That depends on their previous life, mm -hmm. the diet, the lifestyle, the use of antibiotics. So we have to learn a lot about this aspect. Thank you.
Monika Nevern from Germany. I have a question to the last two speakers. Uh, you can also use as a um, sweetener sugar alcohols like silit or er erythrit, so zero calorie alcohols. Do you have any data on that or can you comment on that? There is some evidence, um, certainly in terms of the microbiota, that, that sugar alcohols uh, can be fermented. Um, and and the, now I think there are sort of limits on, on how much um, suggested to be incorporated into foods because that can lead to uh, diarrhea, you know, loose stools, um, because it generates a lot of short chain fatty acids. But I don't, does that answer your question? <laughs> I, I haven't seen data on that either. So I think the recommendation is to limit uh, the intake because of the effect uh, mentioned. Martin Stetskowski from Germany. The idea behind the wrist and starch is uh, not cooking the pasta about 20 minutes. It's uh, to sleep, um, to, to, uh, to cook the pasta about eight minutes and to sleep the pasta in the fridge about two hours, uh, 12 hours and to reheat them. So do you agree with this um, sort of, uh, of remark for the wrist and starch? I am aware, aware about the, the, the impact of cooking uh, and then uh, 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 cooling and then reheating, particularly with potatoes. So there are data showing that in potatoes, by doing that, you can increase the amount of resistant starch. It's not huge. You can have some, let's say, 10, 15 percent of the starch which becomes re resistant. I don't know if with pasta is exactly the same, but it, it, it can be possible. The problem has to do with the gel gelatinization or retrogradation of starch. The starch, in order to be digested, has to be gelatiniz gelatinized. So it has to be combined with water. If you instead retrograde the, the starch by taking away the water, then it becomes more resistant to digestion. And, and so also, the, that's why, for instance, parboiled rice is the same pro pro process. Parboiled rice has a, a, an outside part of the rice which has been retrograded because it has been uh, un it has undergone high temperature but without water. So it retrogrades, and that makes the starch to be less susceptible to the, uh, the action of the digestive enzyme. Um, uh, Sapiens from the Netherlands, uh, I have a question about the current and the upcoming uh, guidelines. So the current guidelines uh, dominated by low fat, high carb are associated with a huge epidemic uh, of chronic diseases and they are not evidence based in the first place. So um, uh, my experience as internist, uh, finally we have uh, low carb options which in daily practice is uh, much more efficacious and giving great uh, results. And it's based, uh, are, it's based by beautiful mechanistically studies. Uh, the Verta Health Clinic is often uh, mentioned. Uh, and it's indeed a base to getting uh, things uh, around. So, um, so my question is, yeah, the, the complete guidelines sh should be built up from scratch uh, of arm here. So, uh, the women health study, for example, doesn't show any benefits of the low-fat, uh, uh, high-carb approach. And uh, please make some room, uh, just like the ADH in the U uh, United States, uh, for uh, offering patients and physicians like me uh, by backed-up uh, low-carb uh, possibilities. Thank you for that comment. Um, I think. Uh it was quite clear from our, my presentation, I hope, that uh, we are opening up now for that we see that it's an option. And uh, our uh, recommendations uh, is to um, use the patient's preferences. And if they uh, want to uh, eat a low carb diet, that's fine. But I think we have to have some, uh, we have to talk about, you know, what kind of uh, fat are you going to replace it with? What are you going to replace the carbohydrates with? That's important. And that you don't leave out important foodstuffs that, that uh, might be beneficial for you.
like whole grain like vegetables and so on so uh, i we haven't um, finalized the recommendations but i'm quite sure that we're not going to open up uh, still i have some reservations for their very low carbohydrate diets i think we we have to move more and more to to look at the quality of, of the carbohydrate because if somebody is having a high carbohydrate diet because it is drinking two liters per day like many people in, in latin america do of soft drinks okay then it, it's much better to reduce carbohydrate and increase for instance monounsaturated fat or other type of unsaturated fat the mediterranean diet is a diet where the amount of, of fat is rather rather high but it's the good fat conversely if you are a vegetarian and you are eating 70 percent of your diet calorie coming from fruit and vegetables and beans i mean that would be why should the cut is the amount of carbide is drink eating the right type of carbide and it better goes on with this diet so put, focusing on quality also increase the personalization of the diet gives more emphasis to the possibility to personalize the diet and that's what we are moving towards reinhold gainer from munster germany um, I have a question to you. Uh, um, you said that the meta-analysis with 23 studies uh, involved mainly studies with um, low calorie <coughs> for uh, weight reduction. But you give a recommendation for normal people who want to keep their weight. So were there studies with isocaloric nutrition in this meta-analysis and how many people? Um. As if I can remember it correctly, it was 15 studies that we recommended uh, uh, energy restriction, uh, restriction uh, and had weight reduction as a goal. But the rest were, did not give any particular, so that will be seven studies or something like that, uh, would not give any uh, recommendations for weight reduction. Um, we do give recommendations for people who, uh, you know, uh, for what kind of diet they're going to eat. But I, as I said, I think perhaps the most uh, potent dietary recommendation we can give is uh, energy restriction and weight loss for the main uh, part of the type 2 diabetic uh, uh, patients. That is much more, um, yeah, uh, potent and gives uh, greater uh, impact than changing the macronutrient composition, for example. Any questions? We have time for the last question. All right. A compliment. Many thanks for the good talks. We're in something slightly surreal. A compliment first. Room 4.2 sounds like something out of a George Orwell novel. But in fact, <laughs> there's been more interesting symposiums here than often in the very big rooms, which tend to play very safe, because you're all much more willing to your credit challenge the orthodoxy. The only question I could throw out is there's a lot of literature now coming in about honey, which isn't just a pure sugar. It has chemicals in it put into it by the bees in fairly high concentrations. We like to call it taste. We slap it on our diabetic foot ulcers. But does anyone actually, whether from a microbiota point of view or from a tolerance point of view or from an evolutionary point of view, because it's been around for tens of millions of years, looked at honey in its own right as a food modifier, or am I just shooting into the dark? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all I know is, I know there's a study going on in, in Australia looking at the effects of honey on gut microbiota, but I don't know the results yet. <laughs> but they, they do contain, honey does, as you say, contains antibacterial components, so um, it's quite possible that it would, it would have an effect. But I think the effects are probably going to be more likely in the upper part of the, the gut they can be I mean it's used as um, to help the sore throats and so on um, rather than probably effects down in the colon I'm, I'm not sure how whether it would have any effect there excellent thank you so much for your active participation thanks to all of our speakers and I wish you all a wonderful afternoon